We want all the stock to be absorbed at the same time that the rice is perfectly cooked. It's no good having the rice undercooked mm. and the dish burnt. I have never gotten so many requests in such a short amount of time. So today we're going to be reviewing Alex's paella. My name is James. I've been cooking for many years in the US, England, France and Spain. And I have made a paella or two myself. So if you do want to check out a few of my paella recipes, I do have a few up on my YouTube channel. And if you do want to check out my culinary course, then I will leave a link in the description down below for you guys to do so. Now let's get started with this video. What's up guys? Salut! This is Alex. Hola chicos! Como estas? Estoy muy bien, pero estoy un poco preocupado. So why am I a little worried? Very simple. I love that Alex starts the video with a little bit of Spanish. It shows that he's learning is good. So why am I a little worried? Very simple. Paella is a little more complicated than I thought. <laughs> Just a touch. He's right about this. It is a little more complicated than you may think. It's a simple idea of actually making it, but it can be very complicated to perfect. So in the previous episode, I had the chance to taste a real authentic paella. It's amazing. In Valencia, Spain. Mm. That dish was extraordinary. The rice flavor, the seafood, the wood fire, the way that dish was realized and treated was completely unexpected. If you guys didn't see Alex's prior video, I would suggest to go see it. Um, it was a very good video. It was very good because he actually went to Valencia and he went to a very good place, Casa Carmela. They're well known for the paellas and they make paella the traditional way over a wood fire. Now paella is from the Valencia area area. This is where it's said to have originated from. Although there are many other good places that do make paellas, say here in Catalonia as well, and I'm sure in other parts of Spain. However, Valencia is the home of paella. In my past experience, paella is supposed to be bright yellow rice and all the toppings you could ever imagine, including seafood, meat, vegetables. Well, little did I know, paella is not that. The very first reaction video that we ever made was reacting to Joshua's paella. And in that video, Joshua made a paella with everything that you could imagine. I mean, it was a very expensive dish to make. But the one thing for me was that it was about two and a half to three inches thick. And paella shouldn't be like that. And you will see many chefs making a paella either exactly like that or very similar to that. Paella is first and foremost flavorful mm. rice. If you don't have this foundation, the toppings won't save it. With that in mind today, I want to show you how to make great paella every time by concentrating on how to get the rice right. So we need to try and achieve two things with the rice. Number one, a great texture. It needs to be cooked mm. properly, separate plump grains that still have some bite to them. But we need to try and achieve this while also making sure we have layers of flavor. The first layer is a solid base, garlic, tomatoes, paprika, saffron. Secondly, we need to boil the rice in an umami rich broth to really saturate the grains. Finally, we need to reduce the liquid in the pan in order to create what the Spanish call socarrat. There are many places that make paellas here in Spain. I mean, it's one of the most famous things to see a restaurant make is a paella. But there are a lot of tourist traps where you may think you're getting the actual thing just because you're in Spain. It doesn't mean that you can still get a bad paella. It's like going to Italy and getting bad pizza or bad pasta. It can happen. Guys, let me know in the comments if you have first, if you have ever been to Spain and secondly, what you have had to eat or what you've tried. If you've had paella, if what type of paella you had as well, because we have more than just the seafood paella. So let me know your thoughts down below. And also if you have ever tried some croquetas, those are delicious. I love croquettes. Short grain rice coming from Valencia. There are a few sub varieties, mm. but the one that is the most popular is called Bomba. Mm. The two main characteristics that makes this rice exceptional for paella is that it's very resistant to overcooking, mm. but also it's able to absorb a lot of flavor. And a lot of that flavor comes from an umami rich broth. 
So let's make one. Alex is right. There are several other types that we do use depending on what you want to make. The paella, unlike the other types of rice dishes that we have, is a little on the drier side. It should not be a soup and it should not look like a risotto. It shouldn't be creamy. And unlike jasmine or basmati where the rice is a little more fragrant, bomba rice does not have that. So it has to absorb the flavor from whatever you're cooking it in to become flavorful. There are other rice dishes here, such as arrote bogavante or arrote cangrejo, that should be a little on the, a little more on the liquidy side, not dry, but not like a soup. This is the base layer. I've got carrots, fennels, onions, leeks, mushrooms, a little clove of garlic, and then this beautiful bunch of fresh herbs. <sighs> So what Alex is making now is what we call, at least here, we call fumet. It's the stock. Normally, when we make any base stocks for anything, we want to use aromatics. We want to use vegetables that are aromatic, so we normally use mirepoix. In France, it's onions, carrots, and celery. In Spain, we also add leeks. Leeks are very common to use. Now, Alex did add some fennel. And fennel, if you don't know what that is, or if you've never tried it before, it is very strong. It has a very strong flavor to it. It's not something that is commonly added here. I'm not saying that places don't add it. There could be a place that does use fennel for the fumet. It's not a common ingredient, and neither are the champis or the mushrooms. At the fishmonger, I've asked them if they had any good fish bones. So I've got these beautiful fish bones coming from a white fish. I think it's called a lieu noir, but they're mm. gonna be the backbone, literally, of our stock. Now, I wanna make a scallop paella. So I feel like this should taste a bit of scallop. And he's doing good. Normally, we do add fish bones or the scraps of fish to make the fumet, to make the stock. And if you have shrimp shells, lobster shells, crab shells, whatever, you can save those and add that to the stock as well. That'll add more flavor to it. I've asked my fishmonger to provide me with a few more elements. So I don't know if you guys have ever opened a, a, a scallop before, but basically when you do, it looks a bit like this. This is the main mm -hmm. muscle along with the corai. So this goes mm -hmm in the paella at the last minute. So the main part of the scallop, what Alex is showing, normally we clean that bit off that he just pointed at, the gonad. And then you've got a few other pieces. You've got a black thing, which might well be the stomach or the liver. Mm -hmm. This is usually a bit bitter and has loads of sand. Mm -hmm. So this usually goes in the trash. Mm -hmm. But then you've got some sort of a skirt. Mm -hmm. I call this the barb and even though it is very often discarded in France, mm. in Japan, I've seen that this was a delicacy. Mm. This is full of flavor. The barb are the gills. We do tend to discard quite a bit of the scallop. We only typically use the center of the scallop. This is going in my fish stock. These are all the scallop skirt that I've been able to save. <sighs> So I've got everything in my pot right now and enough water to cover it all. Now I'm gonna bring this to a boil first and then I'll simmer it for about an hour. If you see Alex skimming the top of the stock off, he's taking the foam off. Normally when you cook a stock, you may have a buildup of foam and you want to take that off. It's the debris and the things that you, do, you don't want in the stock. gonna season it now give it a little stir that's amazing <laughs> so clean so you can do one or two things you can season the stock or and or the paella but you have to be careful with the amount of salt that you're adding right so a paella panel or more simply a paella mm. is usually that wide flat shallow frying pan that is made out of steel in english we have to put pan behind the word paella to differentiate between the two but here paella is the dish and paella is also the pan that you use to make the dish so i don't have that dish but i've got something that is Pretty, mm. pretty similar. I've got this steel pan. It's pretty flat, mm. it's pretty wide, 
It's pretty shallow. So for the vessel, I think we are sorted out. <laughs> okay, now it's time to cook paella. If you don't have a paella pan at home, it's not necessary that you have to go out and buy one because they can get quite expensive. The size pan that he's using is for one. If you're going to be cooking for two, you need a bigger pan and it needs to be a flat pan. So if it's either a saute pan like he has, a cast iron skillet, if you have one, or if you actually go out and buy a paella pan, which will be the best thing, but at least, you know, at least you can try at home without having to spend a lot of money. There are loads of variables at play here. <laughs> so many chances for this to fail, but let's remain positive, <laughs> shall we? More often than not, it's not gonna turn out right. So if you do fail, you just have to write it down what you made a mistake on and try again. That's the most important thing is to keep trying until you perfect something. So I've got my seafood. I've got two shrimps, two scallops. I'm just gonna roast them super quick with a bit of oil. A little bit of olive oil. Olive oil is important for this dish. It's a Mediterranean dish and we need to use Mediterranean ingredients. If you don't have it, then okay, but it, it does add a little bit to it. Oops. Pepper. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I reckon the seafood is ready because afterwards it's going to mm. be cooking again. I just try to sear it properly. Normally when you have a lot of protein, a lot of either seafood or maybe even meat, depends on what you're adding, we sear it first. You can either sear it in the same pan, which is the best thing to do, or you can cook the shrimp and everything separately. It depends on the situation. But if you burn it in this pan at this stage, you need to clean the pan because you don't want the paella to have that burnt flavor. Now, this is priceless. This is the fond that we're gonna mm -hmm. be using right now. Tomato, pimienton, mm -hmm and garlic. This is gonna be creating layer one of flavor. So what Alex is doing now first, he is making what we call a sofrito, or what we call in the kitchen, marca. Normally in the kitchen, we make the sofrito ahead of time with all the vegetables and we cook it for hours. We let that reduce. But at home, you can do a simple sofrito like Alex is doing with some tomatoes. You can add um, some onions if you want. Once I've got this a little cooked, I'm gonna drop a glass of our precious Valencian rice. I'm gonna roast it a bit. And mm. then I'm gonna add some stock to it. Now, when making a paella, at this point, it's a little bit like the risotto. We want to add the rice and we want to fry the rice a little bit. In the professional kitchens, we already have the marca or the sofrito ready. So we may add that after we fry the rice for a little bit because it's already finished. It's a finished product. If you're doing this at home and you're making the sofrito like he is, then it's okay to add it like this, it's fine. Usually when I add the stock, I also add the saffron. Saffron is a key element to any paella. Usually chefs throw it at the start with the garlic and the tomatoes in the oil. I think it's, mm. it's brutal. I'm following a more <laughs> Persian inspired way where I'm grinding it to a fine powder first and then dissolving it in hot liquid, in this case, mm. stock. Saffron is a very expensive spice and it's one of those spices that it can be very easy to buy fake saffron or something that's counterfeit and you won't know the difference. So whenever you buy this ingredient, because it is very expensive, if you see it that it's too cheap to be true, you better double check and make sure that it's real. This is really gonna make the saffron bloom. The ratio is about three parts stock to one part rice. Correct. Bomba is a three to one ratio, but like I said, it is forgiving. So if you add a little too much, don't worry about it because it's not going to burst on you like other types of rice, not as easily. Gonna bring all this to a boil. Now let's talk about temperature control. We want all the stock to be absorbed at the same time that the rice is perfectly cooked. It's no good having the rice undercooked mm. and the dish burned. So this is what happens when you burn the socarrat, when you burn the bottom of the pan. In a restaurant, if they send a paella out to you and it looks like this, the bottom, this is a big no-no. And if it does happen to you, then you need to send it back and complain because this is a very big no-no. It's also not good having the rice overcooked and the dish still soupy. Yeah. <laughs> Traditionally, there are three temperature phases in cooking paella. Number one, the boiling phase. 
This is to cook the rice in lots of liquid, usually last under 10 minutes. Then you've got the simmering stage. This stage allows the rice to absorb that tasty stock and also reduce the liquid slowly while really taking care of the rice. This lasts also under 10 minutes. Finally, you've got the high heat stage. Once the rice is just about cooked, then the heat needs to go up. We need to reduce any remaining liquid in the pan so that the rice can turn into that beautiful sticky rice crust, the socarrat. In terms of timing, we are looking at 30 seconds to a minute mm. tops. Bear in mind that your rice, your pan and your heat source are all going to be different than mine and they are all going to affect how long these phases take. So please taste, adjust and if you fail, just try again, okay? You will get this right eventually. I fully agree with Alex. If you make a mistake and if it's not 100% the first time, that's fine. Just try it again, write it down what you did wrong and try it again. Now as for the chart, Alex says that you should use this as a guide and this is right. This does not mean that it's exactly going to be 10 minutes for the boil, a simmer or whatever. Now when I make a paella after I sear the uh, calamari, after I make the sofrito, I sear the rice or saute the rice, then I add the stock and I don't go by a timer of 10 minutes. I just know by looking at it if it's reduced enough and this could be five minutes, six minutes, it depends on the temperature because if it's on high heat it's going to be reducing faster this is also the moment that if you are making a seafood paella that you want to add all the mussels and clams and at this stage either you continue cooking for 10 to 12 or 15 minutes on the fire if you're doing it traditionally or you can put it in the oven and then at the very end you may have to it's not always true but you may have to crank up the heat to get rid of the residual water <laughs> I think it's ready, and so am I. Mm. Mm. I'm gonna go for a bit of rice, the juicy mm. rice. <laughs> it's amazing. All the grains are nicely separated. The flavors of these grains is borderline too intense, but not. A bit of scallops, a bit of rice. It's match made in heaven. <laughs> it looks like Alex did a very, very good job. Some people will take the socara so seriously that they will flip the paella upside down. And if you made a good paella, it sticks to the pan. If you made a bad one, it doesn't stick. This is a little bit on the extreme side, but if you can get a bit of that socarat without burning it, this is an excellent step in the right direction. I'm telling you, in Spain, people will fight for this. <laughs> there is a bit of crisp, especially if you go on the edges. Oh, c'est meilleur! <laughs> it's gnarly, it's naughty, it's like sticky. Let me tell you a real story. I'm supposed to be dining out in about an hour from now. And I thought I'm just gonna taste the paella in front of the camera. <laughs> He decided to eat the paella instead. That, that's good. I love that. That is priceless. I can't do that. It's way too good. That dish is a keeper. This is something I've mm. unlocked today. And this is something I'm 100% gonna mm. do again for my family. Mm. I wish there was a little more, to be honest. <laughs> right, guys, this is honestly, genuinely, possibly one of the very oh. best recipes I've learned this year mm. and it's November mm. so until this day in my pantry at all time I had basmati rice and I had Japanese rice mm. well starting from this day I'm gonna have a bag of this that Valencian rice it's definitely white rice but in terms of flavor it's closer to brown rice I hope you enjoy the recipe I hope you will try this because it's amazing catch up in the next one bye bye <laughs> Salut. Overall, Alex did a bloody good job. If you are not used to cooking a paella at home, the very first time, more than likely, it's not gonna go well unless you pay attention to all the little details. If you want to add some diced calamari to make this, then I would suggest doing it if you want. He made it in a very small pan, so it's easier to control. But you want this coating that is on top of the rice. It's not just the socarat, but it's the reduction of the stock, the proteins or the fat in the stock 
that coats the rice itself. So with the risotto, we have a coating. There's that creaminess that has to coat the rice. With the paella, there's the reduction of the stock. Alex, j'adore tes vidéos. Si tu viens en Barcelone, j'aimerais te retrouver. So guys, if you did enjoy both of our videos and my review of his video, then please subscribe, like, and share, and go over to Alex's channel and tell him I said hi as well. In any case, be sure to click on this video next coming up, and I will see you guys again very soon. Take care.